OK, so we know that sine of x differentiates to cosine of x, and that cosine of x differentiates to minus sine of x, and minus sine of x differentiates to minus cosine of x, and minus cosine of x differentiates to sine x, which differentiates to cosine x, which differentiates to minus sine x, etc., minus cos x, sine x, cos x, minus sine x, minus cos x, sine x, cos x, minus sine x, minus cos x, etc. And so it works in both directions. So this way I am differentiating, and this way I am integrating. Okay? So cosine of x will integrate to sine x, for example. So... That reduces the problem now to figuring out how I deal with that k that is the multiplier of x, the uh, coefficient of the x in there. Now, if I need to differentiate sine of kx, for example, then I know via the chain rule that the coefficient of the x, the k, comes out the front. I differentiate the sine to cosine. And what's inside that bracket stays as is. So we have k cosine k of x, uh, k times x. So how do I integrate? Well, to get from that to that, I'm going to need to bring that cosine back up to sine. And I'm going to need to divide by k to knock out that k there. So, very similar, in a very similar way to when we integrated e to the kx a couple of videos ago. This will be equal to 1 over k lots of sine of kx plus c. Now, all you've got to think about is what will happen when I differentiate this bit in blue? The c goes, the k comes out to the front, multiplies with 1 over k to make 1, and the sine becomes cosine, which reduces it back to what I've got there. So it works. So likewise, this will integrate to minus 1 over k cosine of kx plus c. Because when I differentiate this bit in blue, the C goes, the K comes out, multiplies with the 1 over K, becomes 1, and minus cosine differentiates to sine. OK? So that is why we have these two results, which we should remember and memorize moving forward.